<laughs> Behave, lady. <laughs> Were you there? No. Oh, silly. Okay. I will have to. You have to give me the memo. I'll have to forward the memo. Oh yeah, yeah. What about my cardigan? Very, very cute. Thank you. Did you remember to ask Pastor David? Let me follow up. I think the mother may take the kids and watch today, which is good. I moved my other, so I don't do that. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. No, I had it all. Well, I want to. That was me. I did. Did that mean I pushed that with you? To let you know? Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I did. What? Richard? Richard? Good evening, everyone. We'll now call the City of Homestead Committee of the Whole to order. It is Tuesday, April 15th, 5.30 p.m. We have uh, with us uh, Councilman Nelson, Councilwoman Sierra, Vice Mayor Burgess, Councilwoman Wendy Lobos, and Councilman Melvin McCormick and myself. Thank you. First item on the agenda is the March 25th, 2008 meeting minutes, tab one. <coughs> I'll move it. I'll second. Mayor Bell. Properly moved and seconded. Uh, comments, uh, Councilwoman Lobos? Uh, yes. I just, I know we don't make uh, spelling corrections, but it does say that I supported my Shahadas Corporation. <laughs> and uh, that's not true. It says that I appreciated his cooperation. I didn't appreciate a corporation. But if you had a corporation, I bet you would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that has been duly noted. Thank you. Mayor? Yes. Actually, I was so, so excited about having my corporation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the same item, the same page uh, two, Sheila, where it says city manager said I was the lowest paid manager in Dade County. Actually, that was per thousand population. When you look at the ratio per thousand, not in terms of the number. Thank you. Thank you, and that the corrections have been made. All in favor say aye. 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 And the minutes are accepted as corrected. Item number 2B, Department of Air Force Jet Loan Agreement, tab 2. I move it. I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Mr. Manager. Mayor, Council Members, uh, it's, uh, as you are aware, this uh, airplane has been there for a very long, long time. Uh, in the past, while the agreement was renewed administratively. Uh, David Wubin looked at it this time and said it should really come in front of the Council for approval. It's the same standard agreement annually, so we ask for your uh, approval tonight. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions? What's very interesting about it is they reserve the right. I don't think we've ever seen it before, but we <laughs> they reserve the right to basically um, take parts out of the plane. What is it like? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, they part take parts out of the plane that they, if, when they run out of uh, the uh, existing parts, like for ones that are actually flying, they reserve the right to take parts out of this plane to pick it apart if they need it, but it can't, it won't affect the outside shell. So, I thought it was sort of funny that they And uh, that's great. And it's, it, it's a great, it's something great to see as you enter the city of Homestead. It's been there for more years than I can, that I can remember, but we, we maintain it up and upkeep it. It's basically zero budgetary impact to the city. Thank you. Any further comments or questions from Council? No, at this time. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes carry. Thank you. Item uh, 2C, PGP Gas Supply, Tab 3. I'll move it. It's, I'll second. Been, it's been properly moved and seconded. Mr. Manager. Uh, Mayor, Council Members, uh, if uh, Mayor was here when we had the approval, it was a consortium of uh, utilities. We're going to enter into an agreement to form a gas utility uh, for, uh, for the electric uh, corporations they have or co-ops or whatever. Uh, anyhow, uh, it's not going well, and everybody's opting out, and it's staff recommendation that we also opt out ourselves. Uh, it's my understanding from Ken uh, that there's no liability to the city, and uh, we are, you know, after your approval tonight, before we put it in council agenda, we're going to have staff talk to staff, but we're going to have also our finance people talk to their finance people. The attorney spoke to them. 
everything verbal is no problem and we'd like to have the eye to it like anybody else but we just want to cross our eyes <coughs> and dot our eyes before we bring it to council for final approval. Thank you. Just we ask just for your uh, approval for us to proceed with it to come to council. It just looks like a failure to perform, obviously, on this. Is there any other, anything egregious or just a failure to perform? It, it, it's really, the, they could not find the, the, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, they could not find the gas volume they were anticipating to have, and uh, therefore, you know, the consortium is not going to work with the very limited supplies. Certainly. Thank you. Any further comments or questions from council? All in favor say aye. Aye. And the ayes carry. Thank you. Item 3, Education Committee, Councilwoman Sierra, her Education Compact, Item A. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is uh, something that the Education Committee has been working on for many, many weeks now, and uh, the quantity of hours from individual residents and non-residents of Homestead is just amazing. It's very inspirational to know that there's so many people backing us up. What you have before you in your uh, agenda is the, the compact just strictly for the City of Homestead with the school board. We have also, as a committee, felt that since many of the students come to our schools, uh, also come from the city of Florida City, we have taken it upon ourselves to communicate with Florida City and have created uh, a secondary compact, um, which I have to share with you all here, which includes both Florida City and the city of Homestead together united as one. And it's exactly the same as the other, except it changes uh, to Florida City, uh, or we'll say the cities. This is something that has been seen by Region 6 office. It's been, we've been working with the school board, um, and we've been working with our attorneys on this. So the wording pretty much has been approved by the Education Committee. Um, before it comes to council, of course, we wanted to bring it to the Cal meeting first for discussion and any questions that uh, the council or any citizens may have on this. Ms. Sierra, thank you very much. First of all, um, Councilwoman Sierra, I want to congratulate you for your hard work on this. And I've, I've kind of walked by the door as this committee was um, discussing, and I just kind of walked by and saw that you guys were hard at work. And um, I really appreciate the hard work that you've put into this. I wanted to compliment you on that. Thank you. Um, it's very extensive, and as I read it over, one of the things that I noted was that there tends to be a lot of responsibility placed upon the city, and that is like the city working and the city working, and that was my only concern, that there seems to be a brunt of the responsibility for the compact is on us. So um, how are we going to handle that? You know, you know the school board is the one who gets all of the dollars. Correct. The schools, the city doesn't get anything. So I'm certainly in support of your, of, I'm supportive of a compact. I support this. But it's just very heavy with the city of Homestead. And, and um, I'm, I appreciate you recognizing that Florida City and county also, we have a lot of county children also who go to Homestead schools. And as far as I'm concerned, there are schools. Children. The bottom right. line is there are schools. And um, so are you, you're going, are we, with in collaboration with the school board, going to pursue grant dollars for some of these programs that you've outlined here? Absolutely. And what I would like to share with the community that does not have the compact in their hand, the five areas that the committee felt were most important to focus on this year are uh, community involvement, truancy, and student support services, teacher, administration, staff, and student retention, academic achievement, and extra, extracurricular activities. These are the five areas that we focused on for this year. This is also a living document. I'm sorry, John. I just <laughs> it's also a living document, and every year it will be revisited. If there's areas that we are able to complete in any given year, then they will be scratched off and will go to other areas. Whenever we refer to the city will do, or the city, and, and that was one of the things that was brought up, and I see that there's two members or three members here this evening. Um, it basically is talking about the Education Committee. Now, there are times when it refers to uh, the city will provide a facility. This is mostly our parks and areas that we have uh, jurisdiction over. Um, and in every single one of the five categories, we have a section for seeking grants with the assistance of board, uh, school board grant writers and, and the regional grant writers. So we have made 
because there's going to be so many budget cuts this year in education, and because we know that as a city we're also going to be monetarily uh, constrained, we tried very hard to not put any strain or requests on money, actual funds, in any one of the commitments that we were willing to do as a city or what we were expecting back from the board, but it is work. And as uh, the education committee continues to grow, we felt that with such a large group and being divided into the, the different subcommittees that we would be able to provide the assistance as the city for the areas where we're committing to. Um, I also, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure you're aware, but the city has partnered in some areas already, like the SOS program, and they have, af they have after school tutoring at the PAL gym, and there's other programs that are going on throughout the community already. So I'm sure there could be some piggybacking. And this, this could kind of follow along the line before there was a compact, how we went after dollars for truancy and Absolutely. ended up getting millions of dollars funded through um, Children's Trust, through Sweet Vine and other organizations. So I guess it's something very similar to that. Very similar. In fact, when we're talking about the extracurricular, which is the last uh, area, you're going to note that specifically we state where we're going to work with current programs and add additional programs. So the current programs that we have in place that have worked so well through SOS and Sweet Mine, et cetera, are, are not programs that we're turning our back to. On the contrary, we're embracing them and just trying to enhance what we currently have um, by having the, the school board work further with us on this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know if I've... Dr. Trantham, did you want to say anything, share anything of your experience doing this? Adrian, anything you would like to share? Yeah, to the microphone. It's the mic. They need to hear you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayor and Council. Um, I just want to say that this was a tremendous amount of work, and I especially want to thank uh, Ms. Sierra for her leadership in this. She really knew how to, to break it down into the different sections that we all took responsibility for. These subcommittees worked, in, worked independently, but this compact was not something that just came out of the sky. We had uh, a half dozen or so of the best practices used for other cities that have already formed compacts with Day County School Board. And we took uh, primarily Coral Gables and Miami Beach. Am I right about that? That is correct. We took those two and we used those. Instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we realized that they had put a lot of work into their compacts. So we sort of piggybacked on that to, you know, to be able to develop ours in very much the same fashion. So I want to say that this was not something that we just threw together. <laughs> this was researched properly. Uh, this was worked on by many subcommittees and people that had interest in those committees, those subcommittees, and expertise in those areas worked on those areas. So I want to say uh, that I think that the council should uh, look at this and accept this. And, and as uh, Ms. Sierra said, this isn't static. You know, this is not something that's just written in stone. This is living. This is, evol this is going to be something that will evolve into what will become uh, our working relationship with the school board and I thank you very much for your consideration. And thank you so much for your work, and I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, uh, Adrian Lopez. Um, just to piggyback on what Dr. Trantham said, uh, these are, we had a group of 15 voting members and 30 advisory members uh, work hard on, these, uh, on this compact here. Um, at the end of the day, we believe that, uh, this committee believes that this is a compact that's, uh, that has realistic and achievable goals for a first year initiative. Um, and we do believe that this is a compact that is worth uh, going forward on. And, um, and I think for the first time, uh, and we were even acknowledged by, by the school board representatives that as for a first time draft doing this, this is one of the best drafts that the school board representative had ever seen. And, and they have done about, I believe, eight or nine yeah. of these now. So that says a lot for the committee. It says a lot for, uh, for the city. It says a lot for um, Councilwoman Sierra uh, for um, getting this initiative moving forward. And uh, hopefully, Hopefully this will be 
uh, something that would be uh, this compact would be approved and uh, we can move forward with the school board and hopefully uh, with all luck uh, Florida City will jump on board on this as well so thank you very much it was a, it was an honor and a privilege to work on this uh, compact with everybody else so and Adrian the fact that this was one of the best they've seen I'm not surprised <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm not surprised either. But it had to be. But it had to be said. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you said it because I. Council on the I have a comment. Absolutely. Um, I must say, I mean, I read this document and was so impressed with how thorough the measurements, the objectives, uh, the activities are written out. And one of the uh, things that really caught my attention was under the academic achievement section, and the first bullet point states that. The district and the city will support the implementation of a feeder pattern from West Homestead to Homestead Middle to South Bay and will complement an IV program. And I went online and then I wanted to see what the grades for those schools that were mentioned were. Once Homestead Elementary is an F school, Homestead right. Middle is a D school, South State is an F school. So to place the standard and the achievement that high, I think says something for how confident we are that we can have a significant impact um, in the education here in the city of Homestead. So I commend you. Um, anything that we can do, I know we're not part of your education committee, to reach this level of standard that we're uh, hoping will come to the city of Homestead by all means you have my full support thank you so much this has been uh, and there's one more member that just walked in miss monica whitaker who's there were or days and, and there were weeks where we had four and five different subcommittee meetings and you would see uh some people would just go to one some people would go to two some people would go to all four or five and they would be here till like nine o'clock at night just putting this together one of the things that we did very different but similar to miami beach is we did add the measures and the key outcomes that we expected. No other city had done that prior to Miami Beach, and we felt that that was exactly what we wanted to do because we wanted to see if we had achieved what we wanted. I am just so absolutely proud of everybody that worked on this, and, and it's just the quantity of hours is just amazing. So I thank you, um, Ms. Lobos and Mayor, for supporting me. This, this was a huge endeavor, and I'm really proud of the work that we did. So thank you. Mayor Bell, may I just make one comment? Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Sierra. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I want to thank Mayor Bell for asking the question about the city's involvement because that was a concern of mine, and he explained it beautifully. Actually, I can't see you, Dallas. <laughs> you explained it beautifully, and I had uh, I had researched some of the other complexes, as Mr. as Dr. Um, Pantham had. Um, mentioned that there, that there were other compacts and I don't think our city's involvement is any more than any other city you know that has done a compact in the past would you agree that is correct in fact there's some cities that actually can devote but monies yes, actual right. monies to right. areas and right now that's not where we are for our first compact but it may be something that we can add along the well, lines. you explained it beautifully and I, I, I commend you um, good work Thank you. Thank you very much. And this year, one other comment. Um, yes. I like the way that we're encouraging, <clears throat> and as I was saying, we're encouraging the businesses to follow suit, and the City of Homestead took the step that we had pushed for, and the City of Homestead took the set step to use employees to volunteer. So we're setting the example for the business community. We're not just, just telling them what to do. Oh, no, absolutely. So that was, and I appreciate the fact that we're incorporating the businesses. And that was all um, started by you. So that's great. <laughs> Again, you have two different compacts in front of you. I guess we're going to be approving the Homestead one tonight. The one that's Homestead in Florida City will be going before Florida City this coming week. Well, I'll move this. I'll move this educational compact. Thank you. Can I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much for your work. We appreciate it. Work. Item 4, Finance Enterprise Committee, Councilwoman Lobos. Yes, we move to the wonderful world of finance. <laughs> The first item is bid number 2.200806 for a pump and electric motor repair. Can I have a motion? I'll second. Thank you. Mr. Shahana. Madam Chair, Council Members, uh, it's a staff recommendation to award the, the contract to the companies mentioned here in the, in the green sheet. This is an, uh, a service we, we uh, normally use as needed. Uh, and this is done based on competitive bidding. So we ask for your approval. 
I don't have any additional comments to add. Are there any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is bid 200810 and it's for an overhead crane maintenance. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. I'll second. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Shahado. Uh, Madam Chair, Council Members, again, it's the similar, similar thing. This is uh, uh, as needed uh, services, and we ask for uh, your approval of the company mentioned, and uh, again, it was done based on competitive bidding. Okay. I don't have any additional comments or questions. Are there any from Council? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, next item is bid 200811, which is course aggregate. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you. Mr. Shahada. Madam Chair, Council Members, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's, it's <laughs> going to be the same thing for all these competitive bidding items. But again, this was done based on competitive bidding, and uh, uh, we asked for your approval, uh, and it's also used as needed. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from Council? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is bid 200813 for pest control. And Mr. Shahada. Oh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank I'll you. We have a lot of those. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's been properly moved. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. And Mr. Shahada, can you also say who our current uh, contract is with? Ms. Lobos, Members Council, it's actually El Toro. They're the incumbent as well. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Shahada. Uh, again, it's, uh, this, this is done based on competitive bidding. It just happened to be the company we are using today. I mean, it's the same company going to continue doing work. <coughs> Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from Council? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The next item is the purchase of a John Deere C35 mini excavator. I'll move it. I'll second. second. Thank you. Mr. Chahara. Uh, Madam Chair, Council Members, uh, this is to purchase a John Deere uh, mini excavator, and the source of funding will be the half a penny sales tax, and we are utilizing the Florida Sheriff's Association contract, and we ask for your approval. Mayor Bell, go ahead. <coughs> this is, this is um, purchased with the half penny sales ta tax, correct? That's correct. Yeah, I think that's important for the community to know that, but that's being well utilized. Definitely. And then we save a lot of money by doing our own street maintenance and repair. So this, this is a very advantageous item for the community. Absolutely, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Bell. I'm a little bit disappointed <coughs> that we don't have a picture up. We've been having pictures up with these uh, bids. You know, actually, I, I thought we would have one, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are there any comments or questions? Further comments or questions from Council? Uh, okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And that's it for me, Mayor Bell. Public Safety Committee, Councilman Nelson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, let's see, Mining Coalitions of Projects uh, Safe Neighborhood Grant. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, Council Members, uh, this is the one I started talking about last uh, Committee of the Whole, so I'm going to continue the discussion. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we asked for approval to accept this grant. But with $25,000 grant, the police department got this in the past, so it's a, a continuation of what we got in the past. Uh, the intended use of this money, we're going to buy uh, T3 electric transporters. You saw them at the race yes. next to the mobile, uh, mobile command center. We think they are great uh, tools for the police department. Lots of police departments are using them and law enforcement. And the rest of the money is going to be used for overtime. So we ask for your approval. All what we're asking for now is the approval to accept the grant and the purchase is different. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. That uh, concludes the committee of the whole. Any other any comments from council? Any comments, Mr. Manager? No, Mayor. Mayor Bell, I do have a comment. I'm going to go right down the line. Okay. Mr. Nelson? Thank you. Um, let me get up to the top here. I'm going to pass on some of the stuff and go to save it for next Monday. Um, some of the things I'd like to talk about is uh, I attended a ASPA conference at University of Miami last week uh, about economic development. Uh, 
They also touched on different areas. It was very good. I'm understanding a lot more of it now. And they also had another smaller conference on Homeland Security. And that was very good. Very knowledgeable. Ileana Laitman was up there. I met her and talked with her at lunch. The other night, after the Mac Awards Saturday night, they were very nice. I'd like to congratulate all the winners of the awards. We had a great time. It was excellent food. I met with Colonel McCauley. I'd like to extend our hand to a good working relationship between the military and the city. And after that, I had a little bit of energy. So I rode with the police department on the midnight shift. It was an eye-opening experience riding late night. I had shootings, stabbings, just accidents. It brought my attention to some things that I want to ask the police department. Can we do something about some community programs? Maybe some self-defense classes, a RAD program. Something to help our community. Citizens are getting targeted. And I would like to reach out to these communities, especially the Latin-speaking communities, and try to assure them that we are there to help. And maybe through the PAL gym or something, set up some type of educational things in the evenings to help these people stop being victims from crime. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Shahada? Mr. Nelson, Councilman Nelson, we will definitely look into this. But I just want council members to know that the police department is normally proactive in educating all kinds of segments of the residents here in the community because they are subject to crime and all kinds of crime. And the police department is normally very proactive in trying to do things. And we will look into it in terms of expanding programs, and we would love to share ideas with you if you have any more. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Sierra? Well, I would like to say thank you to some people that did just outstanding work. I had a neighbor of mine the other day mention to me, you know, why aren't those fountains in front of City Hall working anymore? They were so pretty. And I happened to come into the office, and I happened to mention it to Mr. Shahada in passing. Mike, you know, why aren't the fountains working out front? And he kind of mentioned it to Sandy and said, Sandy, find out why those fountains aren't working. Well, lo and behold, in 48 hours, the fountains were working. And I want to thank you very much for that. And, you know, it's something that's so beautiful, and we had it. Why wasn't it working? Nobody seemed to know at the moment. But I have understood I need to thank Kevin Faddis, who actually took care of them. So thank you very much for that. One thing I want to mention is something that I had an opportunity to do last Wednesday, is I was involved in something called Challenge Day. Challenge Day is a program that is, it's just an amazing program where it teaches children or students about tolerance and acceptance. And I originally went to this Challenge Day expecting that I would be there for 20 minutes and introduce myself and go off to my work. I had three different appointments that I had for my job in Broward County. And after I heard what Challenge Day was all about, I actually had to stay. I called my husband and asked him to cancel those appointments for me. It was one of the most amazing experiences I had ever had in my entire life as an adult. So this was with the Homestead Middle School students. There was 90 students and 32 facilitators. 
it was amazing. I mean, um, there's no way to describe it. Uh, as an adult, I even got involved where I shared my experiences, and and this is something that I'm going to work with Homestead Senior High School to see if we can bring it to them in September. This is a group that goes around, and they will be back in our area in September. So we're hoping to be able to bring this program to Homestead High School. And when I mentioned it um, to Ms. Masonette, the principal at Homestead High, she was very receptive uh, as the principal of Homestead Middle School went also for 20 minutes and ended up staying and ended up taking off his jacket and his tie and crying and promised the students that he was going to smile more because that's all they asked him to do. So it was quite amazing. And the last thing I want to do to those of you that are here from the Education Committee, I cannot thank you enough for your commitment and your work. I know the long hours and Adrian just having had, well not him but his wife a baby, still managed <laughs> to, <laughs> to come out and really spend some, some amazing hours. Um, I was just telling Councilman Nelson I feel like I gave birth all over again because this project has just been huge. It's been really huge and I know that it's something that we needed as a city and to come out knowing that they told us it was one of the very best compacts I'd ever seen on the first shot. I'm so proud of everyone that really committed to this and I wanted to thank them. Thank you very much, Councilwoman, and I, I heard about the challenge. I heard how wonderful it was. I heard it from two other participants, and they said that all the adults and kids were all crying. Everybody in the entire school, it's, it's, it's um, to stop bullying, basically, to understand where everybody is at some point, and, it, and it's, very, it's very successful, and it really works, and I would love to see it come to the high schools, not just the middle schools, to break down some of those tough barriers. So I'm very pleased that, that the program came to Homestead. I had vaguely heard of the program, and if I had been in town, I would have attended as well, but because I've heard, I really have heard just uh, marvelous things about it. So we'll make sure to send you an invite when they come from Hosea High thank School. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor. Uh, I just want to remind everybody the Community Image Board is still accepting applications um, uh, to, to get that committee going and rolling, so anybody that's interested in can uh, send their stuff over to Sheila and she's forwarding it to me. We have a few, some, several people with questions and stuff, and I'm getting back to them and, and, and letting the uh, people know that have sent in their applications uh, that they will be helping. Good. So don't send it in too early unless you're serious. <laughs> uh, congratulate all the military and civilian winners out there at the uh, MAC Awards from the other night and Colonel Dennis Daly for his uh, retirement and off to, a, off to another life he goes, so thank him. And uh, just on a lighter note, if anybody sees a Cadillac speeding around town, it's Mayor Bill <laughs> having a flashback to yesterday out of the racetrack, so you'll have to forgive her. She's, she's having a little trouble not stepping on the gas anymore. <laughs> and you have to finish the story. You can't just leave them there. Well, yeah. We, don't, we were racing each other in BMWs on the track. We won't talk about who won. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. I just have one announcement, Mayor Bell. Next Monday before the council meeting at 5 o'clock, we will be meeting outside of the main entrance to City Hall. Uh, the South East Oil and Water Conservation District will be coming over, and the police explorers will be planting a zero escape garden to celebrate Earth Day. So the community is invited if you want to come and help them out. There's plenty of work and not too many volunteers, so I encourage you to come out, even if you're in suits. Come out, roll up your sleeve, and help them out. So that will be our, our event to celebrate Earth Day next week. Any other questions, feel free to call the city manager's office for more information. Thank you. And thank you, Councilwoman Lobos, for stepping up on that. That was very much appreciated. Thank you. M Mr. Melvin McCormick. Yes, ma'am. Um, I had I received a phone call a couple of nights ago, about um, a few years ago, about, it's been, it's been a while, we had a BMX track a while back over by the Parsons and Rex building. And, um, they want to know if it's feasible to look into trying to revisit that or resurrect that old BMX track we had a while back. So I want to, um, Robert, if you could look into that and let me know how far we need to go, what we need to do to try to make that happen for the community. You know, we're going at a fast rate, so a lot of people have a lot of interest that we're not, we're not providing right now. So I'm saying we can get, get that looked into, uh, looked into. And also, uh, me and Mr. Whitley was doing our CRA ride around last week, and uh, we noticed that, <clears throat> that all the, uh, most of all the poles on the southwest section the base of them are missing. And my concern was that is that either it's not a patrol, enough patrolling going on, and not to point the finger, but it's something that's not being done to protect what we're investing in. And also the businesses that, it's, that they're selling the steel to, it has to be some kind of, some kind of consequences for, 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 for selling city property because that belongs to the city. 
So it has to be some kind of business or some kind of scrap metal place that knows what's going on and where they're coming from. That's a real major concern of mine because their business, they, 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 they're in the city of Homestead and they letting this stuff come to them that's being stolen. So I have a real major problem with that. So I'm so we can look at that and try to track down some of the stuff that's going on with that. And also, um, I saw an article and also on the internet about the lady that lives on Southwest 7th Street with the um, home makeover project. And I know it's really not on the city of Homestead. I'm going to see look at also doing something about that because she's been in the house, like, I think she said since 2006. And it's 2008 right now. And it's very just hard to see what's going on. And she's of age, so you don't know how long she's going to live. And I know she wants to get back in the house before you know, her time expires. So I want to look into that also and see if we can do anything about that. And that's all I have for this week. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, let me tell you, it's interesting, some of the things that you mentioned. Um, lately, for um, just lately, and we I met with somebody, and there's a lot of... Um, things up in the air, but I met with somebody who wants to bring in like a BMX type of a motocross here to Homestead, and of course there's a lot of logistics to even be worked out, but suddenly I'm realizing of the interest in that type of an event, and I had no idea that there were so many people interested in the motocross as well as the BMX, and that there's thousands of people who are interested, in, and I've been told, oh yeah, if you do this and you get Moroso here, which I don't know what Moroso is, but it's the BMX, or the motocross, <laughs> yeah, you know, but all of a sudden, so it's funny that you would mention that, because I have been getting a lot of interest in that as well, so it, this, this is interesting timing. Um, as far as the holiday home makeover, um, it's, a very it's a very sensitive topic, and so I appreciate you bringing it up, Councilman. The problem is this. The city, um, I opposed the project to start. I, I thought that it was um, a, a bad use of city taxpayer dollars, that it was a private, um, a private developer's idea, and the city's CRA, um, under the former CRA director, who is no longer with us, um, subsidized this to the tune of $50,000. Our money was paid and allocated, and I objected to it. And I just think that, um, that the developer, and then the Main Street, um, Main Street was tasked with managing the project, the Main Street director, and it's very convoluted and it's very complex. So it's a very sensitive issue, but the city has to be very, very careful on, in involving itself financially in this because we could have some liability there so if we did so it's, it's, a, it's an issue that would have to be looked at with the manager and with the attorneys but it's a very it's very it's more complex than we can even imagine but I thought it was a bad deal to start with but if, if we can just create some dialogue between the people who's responsible that's to, try to, to, to try to put a rush on them doing their responsibility then that would even be something that's beneficial to us because the lady she looks at it like it's, it's the city and I'm quite sure she knows where it come from but it's still the city of Homestead, and then when you see that kind of stuff on the news and in the internet, it's like it's a bad um, blemish on the city, and we know we had nothing really other than the $50,000 to do with it. So it's, it's a real, real sensitive topic. Oh, and I thank you, and I think that that's a great idea. I think that the least we can do is facilitate dialogue and see if we can't force some type of resolution. So I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. Mr. Manager? Uh, Mayor, Council Members, uh, just, just a follow-up. Uh, it's... Uh, I actually had a discussion with another council member this afternoon about the BMS, uh, BMX and we're going to be working on it. Uh, the other thing uh, I want to mention, uh, when uh, talking about the metal being stolen from the city of Homestead, I'll be very frank with you, we start having problems citywide, copper, copper uh, piping or copper uh, wires. Uh, you know, they will inside the manhole and will, will uh, cover wiring from the substations we did. And luckily it wasn't energized because I don't, otherwise they would evaporate. Uh, but uh, I thought it was a homestead syndrome, but I, I did the research and it's nationwide because the prices of aluminum and copper are practically going through the roof. So, and these are experts who are stealing this type of metal. They know what they are stealing and they know where to sell it. Uh, so it's not a city of homestead syndrome, but uh, you know we try to keep an eye on it. There are cases where me and Dan had a discussion where maybe we have to change the type of material, right? Because you know the purpose of this type of uh, electric <coughs> and st the standards the aesthetic, not really the metal. So we may have to look at uh, alternative ways of doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Judy Waltman, Miss Waltman. Thank you. Um, since you brought it up the property um, makeover, holiday makeover, I too voted against that. But I have a personal interest in it. Um, during the presentation, and Ms. Bell, you'll probably remember, Mayor Bell, they said that there were two handicapped children that lived in the home. And I donated $5,000 from my campaign funds for a handicapped bathroom. It was in the minutes, it was on the record, 
And I've yet to find out whether or not that handicapped bathroom was built or not. So, Dan, I would appreciate it if you'd find out. I'll follow up with Bob, Bob Dole and Steve Scheiber, where that is. Because that was very important to me, because there were two disabled children in that home, um, that even though I felt that it was not a good uh, venture for the city to enter into as a, a project, you know, personally, I, I just wanted those two kids to have a bathroom. So I'm, I've never heard, I've never received any pictures, I've never, you know, have, have you, Michael? I mean, never heard anything about the bathroom. No, no not really. We never got anything okay. back. Well, I, I would appreciate it if you would look into that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, on May 19th, um, Colonel McCauley called me, and, and they've scheduled the um, J. Luce program uh, from the outside consultant to come in and give a give a um, complete overdraft of the J. Luce for the public. And um, I believe on May 5th, um, we are going to have an overlook of the feasibility study from the Seminole Theater. It should be finished. So on that, um, I'll be missing the next meeting, but I'll be back on teleconferencing. And um, um, hopefully, I'll be back after just one meeting. So and welcome back, Dr. Trantham. You're looking good. That wheat juice did us good that day, didn't it? <laughs> OK, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Any further comments? Mr. Shahada? Uh, after you finish, I just have a little. Uh, Go right ahead. OK, thank you. I'll save my comments for Monday night. Oh. <laughs> Actually, there was a, there's a piece of good news I want to tell you about. Today we had the annexation, first reading in front of commission, yeah. passed, so it's going to the next meeting, next, uh, second reading for next uh, month. Very good. It's a long time coming. Absolutely. Long time. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned.